Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you very much for joining us today. My name is Nadia, and I would like to welcome all of you to the Work at Compression Tech, Tech Exchange. I'm happy to guide you through the presentation today. As the name Tech Exchange already says, we will give you technology insights of reciprocating compressors. So we are happy that you take some of your valuable time to join us today. For your information, the webinar will be recorded and all your microphones are muted. If you have questions, feel free to use the question and answer button on the bottom of your screen. Our speakers today are Madhuria Miller, she is regional sales engineer, and Samuel Burkhalter, he is sizing project engineer. Both of them were actively involved in the case we're presenting you to you today. With this, I would already hand over to Madhuria, who will introduce you the project. Thank you, Nadia. Hello, everybody. Today, we are going to present one of the projects about Burkhardt compressor from an oil and gas company located in Europe. We are currently carrying out revamp in our service center of this machine in Winterthur. This company, who is also one of our biggest clients, is an international oil and gas exploration and production company focusing in the Mediterranean. They're specialized in upstream process, that is offshore oil and gas production, and downstream process carried out onshore for oil and gas treatment. Main reciprocating compressors used by this client are two Burkhardt process BS compressors, as you can see in the slide, five aerial compressors, and three Borsig compressors. The BS Burkhardt compressor is a two-stage, two-crank lubricated machine running on wet H2S gas mixture. It has a stroke of 200 millimeter and speed of 490 RPM, with a suction pressure of 3.1 bar absolute and discharge pressure of 11 bar absolute, it compresses gas of approximately 5,000 norm cubic meter per hour. The shaft and the rated motor power are 338 kilowatt and 380 kilowatt respectively. The original cylinder bore diameters of first, uh, first and second stages were 510 and 400 millimeter respectively. This project is elucidated from when the client got in contact with Burkhardt Compression to find a solution for their needs to the approach we took in bringing a solution which involved feasibility checks, engineering study, and finally the revamp carried out to achieve the final goal. To explain a bit about the client's needs, the client had new process requirements. Because of low production of gas, Flow expected on this machine was also low. It was almost less than 50% of the original flow. Client requested Burkhardt compression to recalculate the compressor for the new operating parameters. The speed and the motor power were left as variables as these were to be calculated and checked for the new operating parameters. So now it needed an engineering study. A lot of calculations were done, which will be explained by Samuel in the next slides. So in the end, after the site visit and the inspection of the compressor, Burkhardt Compression was able to convince client to not only proceed with the engineering study, but also do the revamp on the machine for the low capacity, but and also do the overall of the complete compressor in Winterthur. My colleague Samuel will now take over to explain about the study done in detail. Thank you, Maduria, and hello to everybody. I will explain the next steps where our compressor sizing calculations are usually required. We were first approached by Maduria and her team to perform a feasibility check of the proposed compressor change. A reciprocating compressor is capable to handle many different operating conditions. The design of your machine was optimized to the original process specification it was built for. The challenge is how to fit the new or the changed requirements onto the existing compressor system. Therefore, during the feasibility check, we in sizing make the first rough calculations to see if the compressor can run with the desired conditions and if an engineering study makes sense at all. If possible, we want to show how this can be done. 
Together with the client, it is decided what options should be considered for a study to narrow down the scope of the many possibilities and their influences and limits. For example, the options might be completely different if there is a redundant compressor available or if downtime has to be minimized for the modification work. If the feasibility check shows that a detailed engineering study is possible, we define the scope what needs to be calculated and evaluated in detail. First question is how the capacity change can be achieved. The obvious parameters are of course to vary the displacement volume as listed on the left. Change of piston diameter, stroke, change number of pistons, cylinders, change from double acting to single acting, change of internal clearances and so on. Listed on the right, there are other solutions such as change of rotating speed and less obvious, also a change of process parameters can yield a capacity change. For example, change of suction pressure or adding a chilled water cooler to achieve a higher suction density are just two examples. The second point is to put all the possible solutions against the available limit of the built compressor. The maximum allowable com Bind rod load or the pin load, as we call it at Burkhardt compression, is the most important limit to be considered. Other limits typical to a compressor frame size, such as a maximum power or rotating speed, have to be observed too. If capacity is to be increased, the rated motor power and often also coupling rating typically can be a limiting factor. Operating at higher pressures then can possibly challenge the current certified design pressures. Plant equipment such as coolers and separators may need to be checked by the original supplier. If the gas composition is changed, compatibility to the existing materials has to be confirmed. Now with all restrictions known, the numerous modification options are usually reduced to a clear scope which will be evaluated in the engineering study. With this clarified scope, the engineering study can be performed. The next slides show some detailed examples from our discussed case. As a first option, the pressure ratio of this very machine would allow to have it operated on one stage only. To reduce the capacity, we have checked to use only one crank with a new cylinder. This simplifies the piping routing and the use of spare and bare parts. As the second option, basically is the same approach as the first one just shown before, but with reducing the rotating speed so that the current existing second stage cylinder could be reused as it is. The final solution, however, was to stay with two stages and new cylinders for both stages. The fact that the existing piping and motor can be used was an important point that this solution was favored. The next slides show you some other decisions that led to these final solutions. An API 618 reciprocating compressor has an opposite crank arrangement. This leads to a certain amount of balancing the reaction forces of the compressor to the foundation. Now, this case is a very good example to illustrate this aspect. Here you see the calculated values of the foundation forces for the original setup of the compressor. Now, if one of the cranks is operated without piston and piston rod, the missing weight balance leads to a considerable increase of the horizontal reaction forces to the foundation. You see the values marked brown for option one and green for option two. Also with the reduction of the rotating speed in option two, the resulting force is still approximately 15 times higher than the original. Anyway, if this solution was to be realized, 
we would have recommended a design recalculation of the existing foundation by a civil engineer. And as an important side note, this effect would have been less pronounced the more cranks the compressor has. For example, if a four crank compressor is reduced to three cranks or a six crank is reduced to five cranks. Here you see the reaction forces for the final solution, which are very close to the original values. Now some words to the motor selection. It seems clear that if power increases, a new motor is required with a higher rating. And if the rotating speed is changed too. But why would we recommend a new motor with the same RPM and the reduced shaft power of the compressor? The graph on the right shows a typical characteristic of an electric asynchronous motor. If the motor is operated at only 25% of its rated power, the efficiency drop can be quite significant. In our case, the existing motor would be operated at only approximately 60% instead of the original 90% efficiency. Now, there are also some points to consider which, speak, which speaks against a new motor. Different dimensions, such as height of the shaft center line, may require adoptions to the sole plate or even to the motor foundation. Electrical parameters need to be checked if changes have to be considered to the cabling, the motor control center, etc. And the torsional analysis or a new coupling are usually required with a new motor. Here is the overview of the compressor changes as proposed for this project. So we remain with the two stage operation. We have optimized new cylinders according latest design for both stages. The diameter is reduced to 320 millimeters in the first and 255 millimeters in the second stage. We have used the same rotational speed and achieved the new capacity and the possibility to use the existing motor. Now, let me come back from our case specific items to some general calculations performed during an engineering study. Our compressor calculation program RecipCalc allows calculation of more than just the compressor. We have to evaluate if other equipment apart from the compressor, such as valves, pulsation dampeners, process gas coolers, coupling, etc., can be reused or need to be replaced during the revamp. Some additional studies can be recommended. In principle, the goal is that the engineering study covers all the items on your compressor plant that are a must to replace for the specified new conditions. And what are other optional optimizations? At the end of an engineering study, the results are summarized in a comprehensive report, which provides a solid base for the next step. Then Maduria and her team can offer the required work for a revamp to the client. For the description of the revamp phase, I would like to hand over back to Maduria. Thank you. Thank you, Samuel. So based on the final option proposed in the study, we made the offer for the new cylinders with diameters of 320 and 255 millimeters, along with the overhaul of the rest of the machine in Burkhard Compression Service Center in Winterthur was made. Client was convinced with our capabilities and accepted our offer. Once the off order was placed and the contract was signed, the client took care of the dispatch of the crankcase and the distance piece along with the internals to our service center. 
and we in the meantime started with the engineering design and manufacturing of the new cylinders after the arrival of the crankies and the distance piece they were first inspected thoroughly and overhauled according to burkhard compression standards once the new cylinders are manufactured and the crankcase and the distance pieces are overhauled they would be assembled together painted and mechanical bar over test will be carried out before they are packed for transportation when the compressor arrives at the customer site they will be installed and commissioned with the supervision of burkhardt compression field service representative the cylinders were designed according to latest standards while fulfilling api requirements the new cylinders will be supplied with new piston and piston rings matching for the new sizes piston rods all suction and discharge valves sealing elements for all main inter intermediate and oil wiper packings and valve unloaders rings and packings will be designed according to our atura technology and we are supplying burkhardt poppet valves which perform excellently in such applications in the crankcase and the distance piece we will be replacing all the bearings cross sets and the cross set pins the gaskets and o-rings and all the bolts and nuts we are currently in the midst of the crankcase and the distance piece repair cleaning ndt of the critical parts and the, and the painting and the machining have been carried out we are wait sorry machining and the painting have been carried out we are waiting for the completion of the production of the new parts once that is complete we will prepare for the assembly the touch up painting and the mechanical bar over test and prepare for transportation compressor is set to be ready by end of this uh, month installation and commissioning of the compressor will be carried out with supervision by burkhardt compression field service representative to summarize our capabilities and the benefits to the client we were able to develop best and cheapest solution for the low capacity compressor repair is being carried out at burkhardt compression service center so client is assured that compressor is at capable and experienced hands the new cylinders are designed according to api standards while making sure no changes in the piping is required detailed analysis on the complete compressor system is carried out for the new capacity supervision by burkhardt compression field service representative for installation lower power consumption and high efficiency is achieved with this final option and there is lower risk so we are able to achieve the client's expectation of the price for the complete project and the delivery time and so it is a zero hour compressor which will be delivered thank you thank you very much madori and samuel um let's start now our q and a session just in case we have time restriction we may not be able to answer all of your questions but uh, we will get back to you personally to those with questions we were not able to answer live so let's have a look at the questions um Madhuri, i think this one would be for you what about the motor will this be delivered as well uh the motor at the moment has is being offered uh client unfortunately doesn't have budget for this year so they are planning to reuse the existing motor and uh in the in the next year they they would like to um buy the new motor the new power okay thank you very much i think this is question is attached to it what kind of documentation will be provided uh we will be providing all the required certificates like the pressure test certificate cleaning cleanliness test, uh, certificate which will be carried out for the new cylinders then all the inspection reports for the existing parts which will be uh, carried out here uh, and along with that we are going to make a small uh, uh, addendum to the existing manual which will which will include all the uh, instructions and operation for the new parts and this will be at an addendum to the existing manual with all the 
uh, documents along with the engineering uh, study report carried out for this study. Okay. I have one for Samuel, I think. Uh, how long does it take to perform an engineering study? Yeah, I would say uh, for an average uh, scope, such as our case, uh, is about four weeks. But uh, again, this can be very case, case specific. Um, was there any kind of unforeseen damages found on the crankcase or parts after the inspection? Um, and, uh, after we carried out the cleaning and the sandblasting and the NDT, uh, we, we made all the inspection reports. And, uh, uh, and other than small, uh, or I, I should say minor uh, uh, glitches on the bolts or the nuts, uh, on the existing because we had to machine it and we had to remove. Other than that, we did not uh, find any major uh, damage on the parts itself. Another one, what is the gas median composition? It is uh, a wet H2S with a mixture of um, uh, hydrocarbons, mainly at, uh, H2S, so it was a nice application. Okay. Do you need to visit the site to see the compressor? before preparing the scope of offer? Sorry, can you please repeat? Do you need to see the, uh, do you need to visit the site to see the compressor before preparing the scope and offer? Yes, uh, we, uh, we recommend to do the inspection. We do, we would like to visit the site to see the compressor uh, and uh, know the condition of the compressor itself of of course, we cannot do the complete inspection. Maybe the compressor is running on site or, you know, it, there is no possibility to uh, stop and inspect everything. But we highly recommend doing the inspection because then we know uh, how, what to include in our scope. Um, and then uh, it is very clear to make a, an offer on that. Okay. Additionally to that question, do you charge for the visits? Uh, no, the it, visit? no, such visits are not charged because it's part of our complete sales process and uh, we do not uh, charge for it. That sounds good. Customers will be happy. Yes. <laughs> um, can you calculate any type and make of compressor? Well, uh, yes, as long as it's a reciprocating compressor and about in the power range of the Burkhardt compressions uh, frame sizes. So that's approximately, let's say 50 kilowatts to uh, like a large secondary hyper 30 megawatts. Any support from our side on the motor? Yes, uh, we uh, along with the study on the new uh, capacity, we also did a sort of uh, a torsion analysis because uh, we were sure that there will be a necessity to change the motor. Then we did the torsion analysis and uh, we also supported them in uh, making an offer for the new motor and uh, yeah, in, in such cases, yes. We have come. And which information does Borkat compression need from the compressor to do an engineering study? Well, the more information, the better. Uh, it's just a thermodynamical process data, most important suction pressure, suction temperature, discharge pressure, gas composition and uh, required flow. And if there is an original data sheet available, that is helpful as well. Okay. Having a look at the, at the, um, at the time, I will just check. Oh. What was there a pulsation study? What were pulsation study were we done? I think we will have. Yeah, I can uh, I can quickly answer that for this specific case not, and uh, but this is from case to case will be offered separately if required. Yes, but it was checked that if it is required in this case it was not because we are not going to change. Um, uh, there was no going to be major changes on the system itself, like the auxiliaries. We we did not expect that it will change, and there was not cause for uh, high pulsation. 
So we did not recommend for doing it. I have another question here. Do you have a checklist of the data you require for the capacity study? Where can we get the checklist? Yes, we do have this checklist and uh, it is um, and there is a data sheet which we have uh, prepared for the for any kind of uh, recalculation of the compressor. So uh, if it is uh, our machine or if it is any other machine, we have a, we have a kind of a data sheet which has to be filled and we will sh we can share it if you can uh, provide your details you can get in contact with samuel or you can get in contact with me and we can uh, share that having a look at the watch um i would like to finish just session right here we do have a couple of questions which we will um, answer directly and personally we'll have them on the record and uh, with this uh, we're coming to the end of the tech exchange I would like to thank you very much for all of these interesting questions and the recording will be provided on the Borkut Compression Tech Exchange website and on social media. Of course, feel free to share with your colleagues if you think it could be interesting or useful to them. And additionally, in the next couple of days, you will receive a short feedback form. Uh, we would like to see if you liked today's session. And of course, we will also inform you about next sessions coming up. Again, thank you very much for your time and we hope you like this tech exchange. Thank you and goodbye.